Hello, my name is Trije, and I can be found at A Heart for Wisdom. I just wanted to come and give you some encouragement for this day, for this week, for the journey that's ahead. I know that there's a lot going on in the world right now, a lot going on in people's individual lives, and so it's easy to um, let the fire of our fervency, our drive, our passion, the things that we're created to do kind of wane and um, just we get bombarded by all kinds of images, all kinds of voices, all kinds of people telling us this and people telling us this, that, and having to wade through all of the different opinions. And, and so I was just thinking about how important it is especially in these days and in the days ahead to keep our passion for life, to keep our passion for Christ and to keep our passion for the things that we are called to do. I think a lot about Paul and just all the things that he had to endure to be able to even get to the point where he said, I've finished my race. You know, I've run my race. I've finished my course and I'm ready to hear well done thou good and faithful servant. And so I was just wanting to encourage you guys about fervency. I was reading in Romans 12 and this is 11 through 12 out of the passion. It says be enthusiastic to serve the Lord. And I don't know about you, but in these days, sometimes it's just easy to let that relationship with Christ wane, to um, get so bogged down with all of the events of the day and the opinions and the mudslinging and just all of the things that are going on. It's easy for that passion to kind of get knocked out of us. But it says to enthusiastically serve the Lord, keeping your passion to him boiling hot, radiate with the glow of the Holy Spirit and let him fill you with excitement as you serve him. Let the hope burst forth within you, releasing a continual joy. Don't give up in the time of trouble, but commune with God at all times. And the message says, love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on. For dear life to good. How important is that in this day? Be good friends who love deeply and practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert, servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians and be inventive in hospitality. And so I just want to encourage you that in this day and age, what exactly is fervency? You know, we see people passionate for a lot of things, people that are um, all quick to tell you what they think and what they want and what they need and what they desire. But when I look at the word of God and when I see how we're supposed to live our lives, especially in the last days, what I see is that our passion for Christ shouldn't be able to be put out by um, a bad report or put out because someone doesn't agree with us or put out because um, things aren't going our way that day. And so I was looking at John 8, 12, and out of the message, it says, Jesus once again addressed them and said, I am the world's light. No one who follows me stumbles around in darkness. I provide plenty of light to live in. Another translation says, it, when one of his talks, Jesus said to the people, I am the light of the world. I So if you follow me, you won't stumble through the darkness for living light will flood your path. And really, that's what is inside of us, is living light that is alive, that's vibrant, that is ready to illuminate the path that we need to walk in the days ahead, that's ready to give us hope, ready to help us to be creative and inventive and doing good to those around us in fulfilling the word and the will of God for our lives. And so the Hebrew word for follow in John 8 is R-A-D-A-P-A-H. It means to chase down, to be hot on the hill, heels of someone. It doesn't just mean to passively follow someone around. And so what I want to encourage you is that there's a lot of things that will put out the fire. You know, if you think about a campfire, a few weeks ago, a friend made a fire and we were all sitting around it, but he had to keep it stoked. He had to keep putting wood on it. He had to keep, you know, uh, poking the logs. He had to do something that would 
keep that fire going. He had to start it correctly so that it would last longer. You know, he used bigger logs so that it wouldn't burn out quickly. You know, he's good at making fires. And so what we have to do in our spiritual life is we have to find out what is going to keep us fervent, boiling hot, over the top, and always ready to meet any opposition. I think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The fire inside of them was greater than the fire they were thrown into. And because of that, they were unharmed. They were unhurt. And they didn't even smell like smoke. And not to mention, not only did God deliver them in the midst of the fire, but he brought them out on the other side and they were unharmed, unhurt. They were walking about freely. The only thing that that fire burned up was the ropes that tied them, tied their hands. And so I just want to encourage you, we don't have to be delivered from in order to enjoy the presence of God. He's with us in the middle of whatever fire that we're facing. And so he says in this, Paul is saying that we need to be fervent in spirit. The word fervent means to boil. It's a person that is so enthusiastic about his task that he can hardly contain his excitement. And I don't know about you, but with enough of seeing things that have happened in the months and the days and, you know, all of 2020, it's enough to put the fire out. But if we realize that the task and assignment that God has equipped us for, that he's placed us here in 2020, places here on this earth, in the age bracket that we're in, in the uh, color of skin that we're in, in all of the packaging that we're in, God has placed us here for a purpose so that our light will be greater than the fire of the enemy. And so that the light that's within us and the fire of God that's inside of us will burn up anything that the enemy tries to do to try to contain us or stop us. And so this person is so enthusiastic to serve the Lord and to fill the passion of God, to fulfill the assignment of God, that he's constantly diligent, keeping his eyes focused on the prize, keeping his eyes focused on Jesus, diligent, constantly fervent in spirit. And it doesn't just mean full of the Holy Spirit, that fervent in spirit means that we keep the right attitude in the midst of whatever it is that we're doing. So we have a lot of decisions that have to be made in this country. We have a lot of decisions that have to be made as who we're going to follow, what we're going to do, what we're going to stand up for, what assignments are we going to fulfill. And it's important that we have a heart that is right and a heart that is full of passion for God because that's the only way that we're going to make it through the fire. And so then I was thinking, okay, what does servant, serving the Lord really mean? If we're going to have fervency, if we're going to be able to be on fire, then we're going to have to be a servant, you know? And so what does that mean? That means that it's someone who does the bidding of his master. It's described as someone who is sold out, lock, stock, and barrel, totally committed and serving, totally committed to serving and pleasing his master. And so we need to find out what would please our master. How will our lives please our master? How will we uh, carry out what he desires in these days ahead? You know, there's so much talk about what people want, what people need. and But have we really thought about what does the father need? What does the father desire during this time? We are his children. We're called according to his purpose. We're called to be lights in this world. And we're not supposed to be put under a bash a bush, bushel basket. That light is not supposed to be hidden. It's actually supposed to shine brighter. And in that one translation, it said it was living light. So inside of us is light and life. So I was thinking, what are some things, and I've been reading um, Rick Renner and his sparkling gems, and then I've been reading just some different places in the Bible. And so here's a list that uh, Rick Renner gave of things that I learned out of what he spoke on, ways that we can keep the fire burning. So here's what he said. One way that we can keep that fire stoked and stay fervent for the Lord is to have a consistent intake of the word of God. 
to be always praying. You know, we're to pray constantly, but we're not to pray prayers of, oh Lord, get us out. Or, you know, dear Lord, you know, how are we going to do this? And worried and fearful. We're to pray prayers of faith and confidence, knowing that the same God that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego served, the same God that Daniel served, the same God that Paul served, is the same God that we serve today. And we need to be full of the Holy Spirit. We need to be full of worship thankfulness, thankful that we live in a country where we can be able to make decisions, thankful that we live in a place where we can be able to express the love of God and that where we can be able to go to church and where we can be able to live. And maybe we don't have everything that we need. Maybe this year has been a rough year for you, but thankful that, okay, great, at least we still have choice and we get to choose to be thankful. Generosity, holiness, humility, regard for authority and the fear of the Lord. So how do we keep ourselves hot? How do we keep ourselves that flame burning, especially in the midst of trial, in the midst of things looking like they're not going in the direction that the Lord would want them to go? So if we want to keep our fire burning, we have to maintain that consistent intake of the word of God. But we also have to keep our hearts ablaze for Jesus, which means that we have to find out what is he passionate for? What does he desire? What's he, what's his uh, focus during this time? You know, Jesus has to be our foundation because once we do that, then everything else that we build off of will be built with him in the center of it. So the types of things that we need, you know, we, we need to learn how to be able to flex and flow. <laughs> we need to learn how to look at situations and start decreeing the word of the Lord. We need to look at situations and instead of letting them come under us, you know, or letting the situation, us being under the situation, we need to talk to that situation and have it come under that authority of Christ. And so I just want to encourage you that we are children of the Most High God. We are on fire. We change things. We walk into a room and our presence makes a difference because we have living light inside of us. And so uh, Matthew Henry said this about the church of Ephesus. They were doing all of these wonderful things. They, you know, were well taken care of. They were, you know, staying away from things that were evil. But the problem was they had left and forsaken the object of their love. And so he said that having lost the fervent degree of that love when they had first served Christ, that Christ grows remiss because they're not on fire towards him. So he said that when he sees them grow cold towards him, meaning Jesus, that in order to recover their zeal, their tenderness, they must pray, they must watch. And when they see God's presence, then they must uh, pursue his presence. So we need to make sure that we are pursuing him, that we're not just pursuing someone else's agenda or what sounds good or what the world says is good, but we need to find out what is Jesus's agenda? What would make him happy? And so one of the clearest evidence that a believer is truly on fire is his or her undeniable and unquenchable appetite for the Bible and for the word of God. But Realizing that that word is infused with the fiery presence of the Holy Spirit who inspired men to write it. And so God declared in Jeremiah 23, 29, and this is Rick Renner talking um, about Jeremiah 23, 29, that God declared, is not my word like a fire. When God's word blazes in the human heart, it drives out darkness, provides illumination, brings forth warmth and fervor into places that have grown cold. That word burns away the dross and spreads the flames into the lives of those who are touched by its power. So the more on fire that we get, the more of his presence that we get, the more that we're gonna know how to walk in the days ahead, the more that we're going to be able to know how to change the atmosphere and how to walk in victory with signs, wonders following us. So how do we tell if we're on fire? 
Rick Renner says that when our honor of the word is high, then that's going to be one of the determinations of whether or not we're on fire. But when we dishonor the word of God, that's a determination for us knowing that that fire is dwindling and is about to go out. Number two, the kind of space that we make for the word in our life and the amount of time that we spend in that word will be able to tell us where our level of fervency is. How are we boiling? You know, I made some spaghetti the other night for my family and when you first put it on, it doesn't do anything. And then you give it a little bit and there's little bubbles that start, you know, bubbling up. But then you give it some more time and all of a sudden it's rolling bubbles. It's boiling and it's ready for the spaghetti to be put in. Well, the more of the word of God that we get inside of us and not just like, oh, I read it, you know, check that box. But the more that we allow him to speak to us through his word, the more that we do his word, then the more that that water is going to boil and the more that whatever gets inside of it is going to be changed and transformed like the spaghetti. So number three, how well we obey the word of God. Those signs reveal the type of relationship that we have with Jesus. That's going to tell us whether we're fervent or not. And number four, in John 14, 15, Jesus said, if you love me and you keep my commandments, in other words, how much we love him is evidenced by how much we respond and how much we do the word. It's impossible to separate the word of God from Jesus, for his word is made flesh. Number five, how we treat the Bible is a reflection of our intimacy with him. If we neglect the Bible because we're too busy for other things or we don't have time or it's not politically correct or whatever the excuse that we have, then we are unintentionally ignoring our relationship with Jesus. That means the fire is not going to be very hot. So Satan knows that if he can get us to back off the word, then the signs, the wonders, and the miracles that are needed so desperately in this day and age will be put out like a wet blanket. So our goal in the days ahead is to make sure that we have enough intake of that word of God that it begins to boil and that it causes our decisions to be in line with the word and the will of God. If we were really walking in the fervency of Christ, then all of our actions are going to be out of that fervency. Then the things that are trying to overtake us, we will in turn overtake them. So I just want to encourage you that we are powerful because of the light that's inside of us, because of who is inside of us. And we have the ability to see things change. Charles Spurgeon said, nobody ever outgrows the scripture. The book widens and deepens with our years. You know, times and cultures may fluctuate, but the voice of scripture never changes. So as we're making decisions for important events that are coming up, we need to make sure that the word of God is what is informing our decision, that we're not letting the media, that we're not letting uh, our social status, that we're not letting what we have or what we don't have or where we are or where we aren't determine how on fire we are for God or how we choose to walk out our relationship with him. And so fervency means that we're hungry. We're constantly desiring to know more about him. We're constantly wanting to share this gift that we have with him. It's like, you know, have you ever been to a good restaurant and you want to tell everybody about it? had good service and you want to tell everybody about it? Well, Jesus is that for us. He fills those hungers. His yoke is not hard. It's His burden is light. And so I just want to encourage you that as we go through these days to rekindle, fan, stir up, like Paul told Timothy, that fire. Stir up the gift of God that's inside of you. Stir up by way of reminder. I want to remind you and stir that pot that what's going inside of it is going to be changed and transformed. So what you put in you is going to change you and transform you. And want to make sure that that transformation is so that we're more like him 
and not more like the world. And so as you go throughout your days and as you're looking at situations that are maybe troubling you or situations that look like they're going to consume you, like the fire or the lions that Daniel had to deal with and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego had to deal with, I want to remember that Jesus is with you in the midst of that fire. He's ready to help you to overcome and he's ready to let the world see something that they've not seen before, demonstrations and manifestations of his power, of his greatness and of his love. And as we are consumed with him, then we're gonna see that other people are gonna wanna know, hey, why are you different? You know, why are you so passionate about serving God? Why are you so passionate about going to church in the midst of a pandemic? Why are you so passionate about doing your job as unto the Lord? Why are you so passionate about you know, living your life? Why do you have joy when everybody else has sorrow? Why are you living a life full of victory when other people are being overcome? Well, the reason why is because we know that fire that's inside of us is greater than the world that's around us. And so you are powerful. Your decisions, your prayers, your um, giving, your uh, allowing God to do what he wants in your life, your obedience to him. All of that makes a difference. So it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter if it looks like God's winning or the enemy's winning. What matters is who's in the midst of the fire with us. Are we being overcome by that fire or are we overcoming that fire with fire? You know, in California and other places, there was a, actually way back, there was a story that was told of this group of um heard my pastor talk about it, this group of travelers that were going across and there were fires that were all around. And so they would make fire behind them. They would start burning things around them. It was controlled burn. So that way when the fire came to it, it wouldn't burn them. It wouldn't go past that boundary marker. And so when we're burned with the fire and the passion of Christ, then there's nothing that can put that out. There's nothing that can stop us. So be encouraged that you are powerful. Your vote counts. Your word counts. Your prayers count. Your service counts. Your doing your job with excellence counts. Your boiling over <laughs> counts. Everything matters. So I just want to encourage you that we're not overcome. God's not overcome. He's not behind. He's not losing. He is victorious. And if we'll stick with him, we'll be victorious. And so just just be encouraged that those situations that you think are going to burn you, that fire that's been turned up hotter than it was before, eh, no need to worry. The fire that's on side, in the inside of you, turn it up. Let it burn the bondages. Let it set people free. Let it be seen all across you know, your sphere of influence. And as we do, we'll see this nation burn for Jesus. We'll see this nation changed and transformed because we made a decision to stand fervently for him and to stoke that fire and not let it go out. So you are important, you are powerful, and you are equipped for these days. And it's exciting. It's something exciting to see how the Father is going to bring about his will in the midst of all that's going on. So be encouraged. You know, as we read in the beginning, hey, this is a time of hope. This is a time of joy. And so Romans, be enthusiastic, serve the Lord, keep your passion boiling hot, radiate with the glow of the Holy Spirit. Let him fill you with excitement as you serve. Let hope burst forth with you, within you, releasing continual joy. Don't give up. We're on the verge of victory. And in the time of trouble, commune with God all the time and allow him to burn hot within you. So thanks for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.